Blessed is our God, always, now, and ever, and forever. Amen. Come, Amen. let us adore the King, our God. Come, let us adore Christ, the King, our God. Come, let us adore and bow down to the only Lord Jesus Christ, the King and our God. Bless the Lord, O my soul. You are very great, O Lord, my God. Clothed in pomp and brilliance, arrayed with light as with a cloak, stretching out the sky as a tent cloth, covering your lofty halls with water. You make the clouds your conveyance. You surge on the wings of the wind. You make spirits your messengers, and flaming fires your attendants. You settle the earth on its firm foundation. It shall stand unmoved from age to age. The abyss covers it like a garment. Waters stand over the mountains. At your rebuke they will take to flight. At the peal of your thunder they will fear. They hurdle the hills and run down the dales to the place you have chosen for them. You have set up a boundary not to be passed. They shall never return to cover the earth. Down in the gullies you make spring to rise. Waters shall go down between the mountains. They shall give drink to the beasts of the field. Wild asses will seek them to quench their thirst. The birds of the sky will abide by them. From among the rocks they will raise their song. From your hall, lofty halls you refresh the mountains. The earth shall be fed with the fruit of your works. You make green pastures for the cattle and food plants for the service of man, so that man may be brought forth from the earth and wide then gladdens the heart of man, so that oil may put a gleam upon his face and that bread may strengthen the heart of man. The trees of the plain will be satisfied, the cedars of Lebanon that he planted. The sparrows will beard their nest in them, and the herons will call them their homes. To the deer belong high mountains, to rodents and shelter of the rocks. You have made the moon to mark the season. The sun knows the time of its setting. You establish darkness and it is night, wherein the forest creatures prowl around. Young lions roar for their prey and call out to God for their meat. As the sun rises, they will come together and lay them down in their dens. Man will go out to his labor and work until mm -hmm. evening tide. How great are your works, O Lord! In wisdom you have brought them all. The earth is filled with your creatures, even the wide and open sea itself. Within it there are countless creeping things, living beings small and large. Upon it there are ships a-sailing, and that great beast you made to have fun. All of them look up to you to give them their food in due time. They provide and they gather up. You open your hand and they are full. You hide your face and they cringe. You suspend their breath and they die and return to their dust. You send forth your breath and they live. You renew the face of the earth. May the Lord's glory endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in his works. He looks upon the earth and makes it quake. He touches the mountains and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will praise my God as long as I last. Would that my thoughts be pleasing to him, and I will rejoice in the Lord. May the sinners vanish from the earth and make it the wicked be no more. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. The sun knows the time of its setting. You establish darkness and it is night. How great are your works, O Lord. In wisdom you have wrought them all. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever and forever, amen. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Glory be to you, O God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Glory be to you, O God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Glory to you, O God. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. 
Lord, have mercy. For peace from the high and for the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For peace in the whole world, for the stability of the holy churches of God, and for the union of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy church and for all who enter it with faith, reverence, and fear of God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our Holy Father Francis Pope of Rome, for our most reverend Metropolitan William, for our God-loving Bishop Kurt, for the Venerable Presbyterate, the Deaconate in Christ, and all the clergy and people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our government and for all in the service of our country, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this city, for every city, community, and for the faithful living in them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For favorable weather, for an abundance of the fruits and the earth, and for peaceful times, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who travel by sea, air and land, for the sick, the suffering, the captive, and for their salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That we be delivered from all affliction, wrath, and need, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Protect us, save us, have mercy on us, and preserve us, O God, by your grace. Lord, have mercy. Commemorating our most holy, most pure, most blessed and glorious Lady, the Theotokos and ever Virgin Mary, with all the saints, let us commit ourselves and one another and our whole life to Christ our God. To you, O Lord. In the evening, at dawn, at, at noon, we praise you, we bless you, we give thanks to you, and beseech you, O Master of all, Lord and lover of mankind, direct our prayers as, in, as incense before you, let not our hearts fall into evil words or thoughts, but save us from those who seek after our souls. For to you, Lord, O Lord, we lift up our eyes, and in you we have trusted. Put us not to shame, O God. For to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, is your glory, honor, and worship now and ever and forever. Amen. O oh Lord, I have cried to you, hear me. Hear me, O oh Lord. O oh Lord, I have cried to you, hear me. Receive the voice of my prayer when I call upon you. Hear me, O oh Lord. Let my prayer be directed as incense to you, the lifting up of my hands as an evening sacrifice. Hear me, O Lord. If you, O Lord, mark the iniquities, Lord, who can stand, but with you is forgiveness. All creation was transformed with fear when it beheld you hanging on a cross, O Christ. The sun was darkened and the foundations of the earth trembled. All creation suffered with the one who created all things. O Lord, who willingly suffered for us, glory to you. For your name's sake, O Lord, I have waited for you. My soul has waited for your word. My soul has hoped in the Lord. Why do evil and iniquitous people concern themselves with what is in vain? Why have they condemned to death the life of all? Oh, what a great wonder, the creator of the world is handed over to 
the lawless ones. And he who loves mankind is raised upon the cross, that he might free the enslaved of the abyss who are crying out, O long-suffering Lord, glory be to you. From the watch of dawn until the night, from the watch of dawn let Israel long for the Lord. The all-pure virgin, seeing you, O word, lifted upon the cross today, lamented as a mother, her heart bursting with sorrow and mourning from the depths of her soul, her countenance as deeply scarred with grief. She cried out so mournfully, O divine child, how great is my sorrow, light of the world, O Lamb of God. Why have you passed from my sight? Beholding all this, the heavenly hosts were struck with fear, and they cried out, O incomprehensible Lord, glory be to you. For with the Lord there is mercy, and with him abundant redemption, and it is he who will redeem. Israel from their iniquities. As she beheld you hanging upon the tree, O Christ our God, she who gave virgin birth to you, the Creator and God of all, cried out in such great sorrow, where has the beauty of your countenance gone, O oh, my son? I cannot endure the sight of the uncrucifixion. Hasten and arise, so that I may also see your resurrection from the dead on the third day. Praise the Lord, all you nations. Exalt him, you peoples. Today the master of creation stands before Pilate, and the creator of all is condemned to the cross. As a lamb he is willingly led and fastened with nails. His sight is pierced, and he who rained manna on the earth is given drink from a sponge. The Savior of the world is struck on the cheek, and the Creator of all is mocked by his own servants. For those who crucify he, him, he entreats his father, saying, Father, forgive them this sin, because the lawless ones know not what injustice they do. Oh, what a supreme love for mankind. For mighty is his love for us, the truth of the Lord endures forever. Oh, how could the lawless counsel condemn to death the king of creation without being ashamed at the thought of his good works, which he recounted to them, saying, O oh, my people, what I have done to you, have I not filled you with Judea with miracles? Have I not raised the dead with a word? Have I not cured infirmities and sufferings? 
So now what do you give me in return? Why have you not remembered me? For the healing you have wounded me. For life you gave me death. You hang me your benefactor on a tree as a criminal. You treat me the lawgiver as a lawbreaker. You condemn the king of all. O long-suffering Lord, glory to you. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever and forever. Amen. An awesome, glorious mystery occurs today. The one who cannot be contained is now restrained. He who freed Adam from the curse is bound. The searcher of hearts and souls is questioned unjustly. He who confined the deep is now confined to prison. In front of Pilate now stands the one before whom the heavenly powers tremble. The Creator is struck by the hand of the creature, the judge of the living and the dead is condemned to the cross. He who conquered hell is sealed in a tomb. O innocent Lord, who graciously suffered all things and saved all mankind from the curse, glory be to you. Wisdom be Oh, joyful light, light and holy glory of the Father immortal, the heavenly holy, the blessed one, O oh, Jesus Christ, now that we have reached the setting of the sun, and see the evening light. We sing to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. It is fitting at all times to raise a song of praise in measured melody to you. O Son of God, the giver of life, Behold, the universe sings your glory. Let us be attentive. Peace be to all. Wisdom be attentive. They divide my garments among themselves, and for my vesture they cast lots, and for my vesture they cast lots. My God, my God, hear me. Why have you forsaken me? They divide my garments among themselves, and for my vesture they cast lots, and for my vesture they cast lot lots. Wisdom. A reading from the book of Isaiah. Let us be attentive. Thus says the Lord. See, my servant shall prosper. He shall be raised high and greatly exalted. Even as many were amazed in, at him, so marred was his look beyond that of man and his appearance beyond that of mortals, so that he shall startle many nations. Because of him, kings shall stand speechless. For those who have not been told shall see. Those who have not heard shall ponder it. Who would believe what we have heard? To whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? He grew up like a sapling before him, like a shoot from the parched earth. There was, there was in him no stately bearing to make us look at him, nor appearance that would attract us to him. He was spurned and avoided by men, a man of suffering, a custom. 
subjects them to infirmity, one of those from whom men hide their faces, spurned and we held him in no esteem. Yet it was our, our infirmities that he bore, our sufferings that he endured, while well, we thought of him as stricken, as one smit, smitten by God and afflicted. But he was pierced for our offenses, crushed for our sins. Upon him was the chastisement that makes us whole. By his stripes we were healed. We had all gone astray like sheep, each following his own way. But the Lord laid upon him the guilt of us all. Though he was harshly treated, he submitted and opened not his mouth. Like a lamb led to the slaughter, or a sheep before the shearers, he was silent and opened not his mouth. Oppressed and condemned, he was taken away. And who would have thought any more of his destiny? When he was cut off from the land of the living and smitten for the sin of the people, a grave was assigned him from among the wicked and a burial place with evil doers. Though he had done no wrong, nor spoken any falsehood, but the Lord was pleased to crush him in infirmity. If he, gave, if he gives his life as an offering for sin, he shall see his descendants in a long life, and the will of the Lord shall be accomplished through him. Because of his affliction, he shall see the light in fullness of days. Through his suffering, my servant shall justify many, and their guilt shall he bear. Therefore, I will give him his portion among the great, and he shall divide the spoils with the mighty, because he surrendered himself to death and was counted among the wicked, and he shall take away the sins of many and win pardon for their offenses. Raise a, gl a glad cry, you barren one who did not bear. Break forth in jubilant song, you who were not in labor. For more numerous are the children of the deserted wife than the children of her who has a husband, says the Lord. Let us be attentive, peace be to all wisdom, be attentive. You have plunged me into the bottom of the pit, into the darkness and the shadow of death into the darkness and the shadow of death. O Lord, my God, send salvation. By day and by night I cry out to you. You have plunged me into the bottom of the pit, into the darkness and the shadow of death into the <laughs> darkness and the shadow of death. Wisdom. A reading from the first epistle of St. Paul the Apostle to the Corinthians. Let us be attentive. Brethren, the message of the cross is complete absurdity to those who are headed for ruin, but to us who are experiencing salvation, it is the power of God. Scripture says, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and thwart the cleverness of the clever. Where is the wise man to be found? Where is the scribe? Where is the master of worldly argument? Has not God turned the wisdom of this world into folly? Since in God's wisdom, the world did not come to know him through wisdom, it pleased God to save those who believe through the absurdity of the preaching of the gospel. Yes, Jews demand signs, and Greeks look for wisdom, but we preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews, and an absurdity to Gentiles. But to those who are called, Jews and Greeks alike, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. For God's folly is wiser than men, and his weakness more powerful than men. Brethren, you are among those called. Consider your situation. Not many of you are wise, as men account wisdom. Not many are influential, and surely not many are well born. God chose those whom the world considers absurd to shame the wise, 
He singled out the weak of this world to shame the strong. He chose the world's low-born and despised, those who count for nothing, to reduce to nothing those who were something, so that mankind may, may do no boasting before God. God it is who has given you life in Christ Jesus. He has made him our wisdom and also our justice, our sanctification and our redemption. This is just as you find it written, let him who would boast, boast in the Lord. As for myself, brethren, when I came to you, I did not come proclaiming God's testimony with any particular eloquence or wisdom. No, I determined that while I was with you, I would speak mm -hmm. of nothing but Jesus Christ and him crucified. Peace be to you, reader. Wisdom be attentive. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Save me, O God, for the water strengthened my life. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Insult has broken my heart and I am weak. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Let their eyes grow dim so they cannot see. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Let us stand and listen to the Holy Gospel according to Saint Matthew. Glory be to your passion, O Lord. Let us be attentive. At daybreak, all the chief priests and the elders of the people took formal action against Jesus to put him to death. They bound him and led him away to be handed over to the procurator Pilate. Then Judas, who had handed Jesus over, seeing that Jesus had been condemned, began to regret his action deeply. He took the 30 pieces of silver back to the chief priest and elders and said, I did wrong to deliver up an innocent man. They retorted, What is that to us? It is your affair. So Jesus Judas flooded the money into the temple and left. He went off and handed himself. The chief priest picked up the silver, observing, It is not right to deposit this in the temple treasury since it is blood money. After consultation, they used it to buy the potter's field as a cemetery for foreigners. That is why that field even today is called blood field. On that occasion, what was said through Jeremiah, the prophet was fulfilled. They took the 30 pieces of silver, the value of a man with the price of his head. A price set by the Israel, Israelites, and they paid it out for the potter's field, just as the Lord had commanded me. Jesus was arranged before the procurator, who questioned him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus responded, As you say, Yet when he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he had made no reply. And Pilate said to him, Surely you hear how many charges they bring against you. He did not answer Pilate, 
on a single count, much to the procurator's surprise. Now, on the occasion of the festival, the procurator was accustomed to release one prisoner whom the crowd would designate. They had at the time a notorious prisoner named Barabbas. Since they were already assembled, Pilate said to them, which one do you wish me to replace for you? Barabbas or Jesus, the so-called Messiah? Pilate knew, of course, that it was out of jealousy that they had handed Jesus over. While Pilate was still proceeding on the bench, his wife sent him a message. Do not interfere in the case of that holy man. I had a dream about him today which has greatly upset me. Meanwhile, the chief priest and elders conceived the crowds that they should ask for Barabbas and have Jesus put to death. So when the procurator asked them, which one do you wish me to release for you? They said, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, then what I am do with Jesus, the so-called Messiah, crucified him. They all cried. He said, why what? crime has he committed, but they only shouted the louder, crucify him. Pilate finally realized that he was making no impression and that a riot was breaking out instead. He called for water and washed his hands in front of the crowd declaring as he did so, I am innocent of the blood of this just man. The respon responsibility is yours. The whole people said in reply, let his blood be on us and on our children. And the Pilate released Barabbas to them. Jesus, However, he first had scourged, then he handed him over to be crucified. The procurator's soldiers took Jesus inside the praetorium and collected the whole cohort around him. Around him. They stripped off his clothes and wrapped him in a scarlet military cloak, wearing a, cr a crown out of thorns, they fixed it on his head and stuck a reed in his right hand. Then they began to mock him by dropping to their knees before him, saying, All hail! King of the Jews, they also spat at him. Afterward, they took hold of the reed and kept striking him on the head. Finally, when they had finished making of a fool of him, they stripped him on the cloak, dressed him in his own cloak, and led him off to crucifixion. On their way out, they met a Cyrenian named Simon. This man they pressed into service to carry the cross. Upon arriving at a site called Golgotha, a name which means skull place, 
The soldiers gave Jesus a drink of wine flavored with gall. Jesus tested but refused to drink. When they had crucified him, they divided his clothes among them by casting lots. Then they sat down there and kept watch over him. Above his head they had put the charge against him in written. This is Jesus, King of the Jews. Two insurgents were crucified along with him, one at his right and one at his left. One of the criminals handing in crucifixion blasphemed Jesus. Aren't you the Messiah? Then save yourself and us. But the other one rebuked the first. Have you no fear of God, seeing you are under the same sentence? We deserve it after all. We are only paying the price for what we have done. But this man has done nothing wrong. He then said, Jesus, remember me when you enter upon your reign. And Jesus replied, I assure you, this day you will be with me in paradise. People going by keep insulting Jesus, tossing their heads and saying, So you are the one who was going to destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days. Save yourself, why don't you? Come down off that cross if you are God's son. The chief priest and the scribes and the elders also joined in the jeering. He saved others, but he cannot save himself. So he is the king of Israel. Let's see him come down from that cross and then we will believe in him. He revealed on God. Let God rescue him now if he wants to. After all, he claimed, I am God's son. The insurgents who had been crucified with him kept doubting him in the same way. From noon onward, there was darkness over the whole land until mid-afternoon. Then toward mid-afternoon, Jesus cried out in a loud tone, Eli, Eli, lema sabachthani. That is, my God, my God, why have you forsake, forsaken me? This made some of the bystanders who heard it remark, He is invoking Elijah. Immediately one of them ran off and got a sponge. He so soaked it in a cheap wine and sticking, sticking in on a reed, tried to make Jesus drink. Meanwhile, the rest said, leave him alone. Let's see whether Elijah comes to his rescue. Once again, Jesus cried out in a loud voice and then gave up his spirit. Suddenly the curtain of the sanctuary was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth quaked, boulders split, tombs opened, and the bodies of saints who had fallen asleep were raised. After Jesus' resurrection, they came forth from their tomb and entered the holy city and appeared to many. The centurion and his men 
who were keeping watch over Jesus were terror stricken at seeing the earthquake and all that was happening and said clearly this man the son of God since it was the preparation day the Jews did not want to have the bodies left on the cross during the Sabbath for that Sabbath was a solemn feast day they asked Pilate that the legs be broken and the bodies be taken away accordingly the soldiers came and broke the legs of the men crucified with Jesus first of the one then of the other when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead they did not break his legs one of the soldiers uh, thrust the lens into his side and immediately blood and water flowed out this testimony has been gave given by an eyewitness and his testimony is true he tells what he knows and is true so that you may believe these events took place for the fulfillment of scripture break none of his bounds there is still another scripture passage which says they shall look on him whom they have pierced many women were present looking on front a distance they had followed Jesus from Galilee to attend to his needs among them were Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Joseph and the mother of Zebedee's son when evening fell a wealthy wealthy man from Arimathea arrived Jesus by name he was another of Jesus disciples and had gone to rescue the body of Jesus Thereupon Pilate issued an order for its release. Taking the body, Joseph wrapped it in fresh linen and placed it in his own new tomb, which has been hung from a formation of rock. Then he rolled a huge stone across the entrance of the tomb and went away. But Mary Magdalene and the other Mary remained sitting there facing the tomb. Glory be your long suffering, O Lord. Have mercy on us, O God, according to your great mercy. We pray you hear and have mercy. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Again, we pray for our Holy Father, Francis Pope of Rome, and for our most reverend Metropolitan William, for our God-loving Bishop Kurt, for those who serve and have served in this holy church, for our spiritual fathers, and for all our brothers and sisters in Christ. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Again, we pray for our government and for all in the service of our country. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Again, we pray for the people here present who await your great and abundant mercy for those who show us mercy and for all Christians of the true faith. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. For you are merciful and loving God, and we give glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and ever and forever. Amen. Vat 
save, O Lord, to keep us this evening without sin. Blessed are you, O Lord, God of our fathers, and praise and glorify your name forever. Amen. Lord, your mercy be upon us as we have placed our trust in you. Blessed are you, O Lord. Teach us your precepts. Blessed are you, O Master. Make us understand your precepts. Blessed are you, O Holy One. Enlighten us by your precepts. Lord, your mercy endures forever. Despite the work of your hands, to you is due praise, to you is due a hymn, glory is due to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Let us complete our evening prayer to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Protect us, save us, have mercy on us, and preserve us, O God, by your grace. Lord, have mercy. Let this whole evening be perfect, holy, peaceful, and without sin. Let us beseech the Lord. Grant it, O Lord. For an angel of peace, a faithful guide and guardian of our souls and bodies, let us beseech the Lord. Grant this, O Lord. For the pardon and remission of our sins and offenses, let us beseech the Lord. Grant this, O Lord. For what is good and beneficial to our souls and for peace in the world. Let us beseech the Lord. Grant this, O Lord. That we may spend the rest of our life in peace and repentance. Let us beseech the Lord. Grant this, O Lord. For a gracious, painless, and ashamed, peaceful end of our life, and for a good account before the fearsome judgment seat of Christ, let us beseech the Lord. Grant this, O Lord. Asking for unity in the faith and for communion of the Holy Spirit, let us commit ourselves and one another and our whole life to Christ our God. To you, O Lord. <clears throat> For you are a gracious God, and you love mankind, and we give glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and ever and forever. Amen. Peace be to all. And with your spirit. Love your heads to the Lord. To you, O Lord. O Lord, our God, you Lord the heavens, when you came down for the salvation of the human race. Now look down on your servants and on, and on your inheritance, for they have bowed their heads to you, the judge, both awesome and loving. They do not await the help that is from men, but look for your mercy and are ready to receive your salvation. Guard them and all times, this evening and tonight, against all enemies, against the devils, as well as against vain thoughts and evil dreams. May the might of your kingdom be blessed and 
exalted Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and ever and forever. Amen. When the Arimathean lifted you, lifeless from the cross, O Lord of life, he anointed you, O Christ, with mirth and wrapped you in a shroud. And he was moved by heartfelt love to kiss your body not subject to decay, but was restrained by fear. And rejoicing, he cried out to you, Glory to your condescension, O lover of mankind. The Lord is King in splendor robe, O Savior of all. When you placed yourself for all mankind in a new tomb, the abyss which ever mocked was terrified when it saw you. The bonds were shattered, the gates were broken. And the graves opened and the dead arose. Adam joyfully called out to you. Glory to your condescension, O lover of mankind. He has made the word firm not to be moved. When you divine by nature, indescribable and infinite, we were willingly enclosed in the tomb. You ended the mysteries of death, O Christ, and annihilated the kingdom of Hades favoring this Sabbath day with your divine blessing, glory, and light. Holiness benefits your house, O Lord, for length of days. When the heavenly power saw you, O Christ, culminated by lawless men, they were amazed at your long suffering, which our words cannot express. And when they beheld the stone of your tomb, being sealed by the hands that pierced your incorruptible side. They still rejoiced at our salvation and cried out to you, Glory to your condescension, O Christ. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, ah, forever, ah, amen. Joseph and Nicodemus took you down from the cross, your body clothed in glory as with a robe. But seeing you lifeless, naked, and unburied, began to weep and lament, saying, Glory, my sorrow, my sweet Jesus, the sun seeing you hanging upon the cross 
was clothed in darkness. The earth quaked in fear, and the curtain of the temple was torn asunder. But behold, I now see you as accepting death for my sake. How, O oh my God, shall I bury you? With what type of shroud shall I wrap you? With what hands shall I touch your body, not subject to decay? O oh, gracious Lord, with what songs I hymn your departure. I exalt your suffering. I extol in song your burial and resurrection, calling out, O Lord, glory be to you. Now you shall dismiss your servant, O Lord, according to your word in peace, because my eyes have seen your salvation which you prepared before the face of all peoples, a light to the revelation and Gentiles, and the glory of your people is right. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever and forever. Amen. O most holy Trinity, have mercy on us. O Lord, cleanse us of our sins. O Master, forgive our transgressions. O Holy One, come to us and feel our infirmities for your name's sake. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. And now and forever and ever. Amen. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. For sign in the kingdom and the power and the glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and ever and forever. Amen. The noble Joseph took down from the cross your pure body anointing it with spices, a wrapped it in pure linen, and placed it in a new tomb. The noble Joseph took down from your cross your in for your body anointing it with the spot 
spices he wrapped it in pure linen and placed it in a, a new tomb La ho Christ reveals 
himself as not subject to decay. Wisdom, give the blessing. Blessed and glorified are you, O Christ our God, always, now, and ever, and forever. Amen. O Holy Mother of God, save us. More honorable than the cherubim, and beyond compare, more glorious than the seraphim, who a virgin gave birth through the word of God, you truly the mother of God we magnify. Glory be to you, O Christ, our God, our hope. Glory be to you. Glory to the Father, and, and to the, the Son, Son, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit, now and ever and forever. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Give the blessing. May Christ, our true God, who endured dreadful suffering, the living, life-giving cross, and wandering burial for our sake and for our salvation, have mercy on us and save us through the prayers of His most pure Mother, Patroness of this Holy Church, and of the holy, glorious, and praiseworthy Apostles, and to, uh, of our venerable and God-bearing fathers, and of all the saints, for he is gracious and loves mankind. Uh, 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 amen. Glory to Jesus Christ. Glory be forever. Dear brothers and sisters of Christ, <clears throat> The suffering of the Savior began and end in, a, in an unexpected place, in the garden. In the beginning of, in the beginning is the garden of Hetsemani, with prayed for the cup, bloody sweet and the rest. And finally, there is another garden where the Son of God was betrayed. This theme, I mean, the theme of the garden, is no surprise to the world of the Bible. The first man, Adam, lived in the garden where the fall occurred. As the gospel takes us back to the very place where it all began. The place of human tragedy becomes the place of birth, of new life, and transform transformation of the world. A new creation, a new Adam. New beginning with the moment of rebirth. What people have distorted with their evil will is restored by the will of God. Everything starts from the from the beginning. As the creation of the world began with with darkness. So we stand in a temple clothed in black robes with the lights turned off. Today there is no joy. No, as there is no communion, no liturgy today, no Eucharist. The Son of God died on the cross and lays in the tomb. A cure came through the tree. The sin, sin came through the tree. Death came through the tree. It's fruit forever 
poison humanity. Salvation came through another tree, through the cross. The fruit that hands on it is also a name a table and whoever eats it is healed today we are in the church and now we have this funeral and the main question is today is God is really died of course now <clears throat> in this time we already know It's not the end. Tomorrow we will have day. Of course, tomorrow morning we will have liturgy. <clears throat> and uh, we will commemorate, commemorate uh, the Passion. And uh, tomorrow evening, we already know it now. We will sing Christ is risen from the dead. But the really main <clears throat> question is God is really dead now? Of course, for many people, especially now in this world, God, He even never was born because they live in a sin because they don't know nothing about having God. Maybe this is not correct, but it's really true. For us, for us as Christians in the church, of course we, have, we also have a lot of sins every day. You and me. Of course, we can do a lot of bad deeds during the day. Of course, we, we can have not only sins, bad words, bad deeds, bad habits, because we live in the world. Not because we live in the world, because we, sometimes we like to do a sin, especially with bad habits. We like it. We must be honest with ourselves. But as the Christians, at least we try, we try to to fix our life. We try every day. <clears throat> In the end of the day, maybe not long time, but maybe just a couple words, couple minutes, but we try to, to talk with God. Maybe just one prayer, maybe just a couple words. And I hope we, we, we do it. We try to talk with God and ask Him about our, about our next step tomorrow. And today evening, before we will go to bed, we will do the same. But now we are here in, in the church, and now God He invites us to give Him a last kiss because we do this for our relatives for our friends, for our parents, <clears throat> when they passed away, we have a funeral, and in the end of the funeral, we have this last, last kiss for them. And the same God invites us to do that now. Glory to Jesus Christ. Glory be forever. Od krest vistaju Spasitelu moj milej i molu tebe o najže meni za hrinki žalši. 
I stand, O Savior, hear my request. Turn me from all sin, let me feel remorse. Here, let me pray and rest. You paid for my sins. You paid for my faults, you redeem mankind lost. Having suffered the passion for us, Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy, have mercy. 